What's up guys, Sadamita here. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video and today I'm going to be doing a video on what ISP is better in my area which will be Pontypool in South Wales. So basically, this is a competition between three ISPs which is TalkTalk, Talk, EE and Sky. Um, the Talk Talk router is my own one obviously. It's running on the Billion Bipack 8800NL. The Sky Router, which is a SR102. And finally on the E network, I am running my other Billion Bipack 7800N. So guys, stick around for the video and we're going to determine the best ISP, well most recommended ISP by reliability and speed over line tests. Thank you. So the Sky stats. First of all, the uptime is 87 hours, 7 minutes and 50 seconds with no collisions at all on packets. First of all, the connection speed is 18 megabits down speed and 1.278 megabits upstream. Line antenna, line antenna ration downstream is 31.0 decibels with the upstream of 18.0 decibels. Noise margin is 13.3 decibels with upstream of 5.5 decibels. These are very good regions. Usually the exchanges will obviously fluctuate and the DSLAM will change these. But at the minute, the DSLAM is pretty strict and it's actually got very low because it got very good lines. So here we have the Billion Bipack 7800N. This route is connected to the EE network. And at the minute, the stats uptime is 10 days and 18 hours. The DSL connection is four days and 9 hours and 11 minutes and 58 seconds with a upstream of 1.139 and downstream of 16.12. So now these are the advanced settings on the dual band 7800N for the e network on my own route obviously. There is no defects on the DMT which is basically a diagnostic tool or a diagnostic management tool that's called whatever it is. But yeah, the upstream as you can see the stats are 1.139 139, downstream is 16.212, SNR upstream is 5.2, SNR downstream is 2.8, line antiration up is 15.4, and line antiration down is 30.0. So now we're coming to the Talk Talk network with my Billion Bipack 8800NL. It's a actual VDSL router, not an ADSL, a standalone router. As you can see, my status is 10 minutes, 13 seconds for uptime, and for DSL uptime is 8 minutes and 46 seconds. So, this route now goes into the massive technical areas. As you can see, my uptime is on, downstream all stuff is already, the SNM margin is 0. Ball. This SNR is adjusted because you can adjust on this router and on the 7800N from Billion. But on this one, you actually specifically change SNR for only downstream, which as you can see has been mastered. Um, my antenna down is 31.0, and my upstream is 16.8. Uh, my antenna rate, which is basically the antenna rate from the DSAM. So if there is not on the internet, then you can get a better speed. Uh, mine is 18.384. My actual rate is 18.135, I'm going to say that. So yeah, as you see, the other stats at the bottom below that is the actual line configuration stats, or the line errors, line prefixes, etc. Like you got a lot of, like I assume probably a lot you're going to say is like a lot of errors in line, but it all depends. You know? Line stats are line stats at the end of the day. So as you see now guys, I'm doing a speed test, and this speed test is obviously the load balance, which basically means all my lines are combined together and put through to one socket or system, or however you want to say it, it's basically three in one. So just to go by and check on the speed test, most of them will be differed, because you've got to have a direct link to obviously different servers, different IXs, like IX basically means internet exchanges, and so on. The better the servers and the better the equipment then also you can get better stats and the closer the better and if they're using fiber optic 
full or fiber optic partly it all depends just take a bio and watch the rest of the test thank you So as you can see I'm not using speedtest.net now, I'm actually using Think Broadband Speed Tester. This is a total different one, this is either done by TCP tests or UDP tests, all depends, I don't really exactly look into it, but it's just a test. <laughs> the tech check overall bandwidth, obviously this is not accurate, but it's still showing my down foot speed. So 
this speed test is the new switch speed test. It's moderately ac accurate. I mean, I don't have any faults yet with it, so yeah. Um, it's giving me overall good satisfactory tests. I mean, a lot of my tests actually come back pretty positive. So yeah, if you want to use a speed test, this one is good and speedtest.net on different types of uh, exchanges like Milton Keynes is okay, um, exchanges in America like the Tower Stream in New York, that's pretty good as well. So right, as you can see now, my overall download speed is 42. So then guys, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you disliked it, thumbs down. If you want to know any more about networking, etc., then just ask me. As you can see, my bandwidth, complete bandwidth, is about 55, I'd say, or 53 complete download speed and about 3 or 3.3 3 upload. So it's kind of different where you've got a low balancer because it basically makes your internet a lot more faster. You've got multiple lines. So yeah, low balance is the best way for me, remote lines, but I've only just actually had word, word off OpenReach, which is the service provider, well not service provider, it's the actual infrastructure provider. Um, they're actually in doing the FTTC, which is the fiber out of the cabinet, they're actually implementing this in my area now, which is actually, they've got the cabinet there, they just plumb it all in, and obviously that's a lot better because they're not that far away from the cabinet. So I'm looking at about 80 meg down and 20 meg up and I have multiple lines and hopefully they'll be doing the FOD which is Fibre On Demand or FTTP for the people who don't know about that. Um, hopefully I'll have pure fibre and hybrid fibre. So more tests to come. Hopefully soon before March or after March. Thank you guys for watching. Sandra Mintazo.